So we're going to go ahead, I have a 2001 Toyota Tacoma and we're going to do a coolant drain and refill or you could argue it's a flush. So flush would be uh, something where we just do it repetitively to get all the system out but we're just going to drain and refill. But the most important thing is when you do a cooling system service, you need to get all the air out of the system much like a brake system because any air bubbles will cause the vehicle to overheat and it could damage your motor. So what we have over here is we're going to use a vacuum pump and we're going to use this vacuum pump to suck all the uh, antifreeze out of the reservoir. And then we're going to drain the system and after we drain it, we're going to go ahead and use two different systems. So we're, we will at the end use a burping funnel, which my students have known for several years. We have three different types of refill systems that will use air to refill it, okay? So uh, they work all the relatively the same. So we will fill it with this and then we'll burp it with this at the end. Uh, so let's get started. What you see in this animation is a typical cooling system. There's different variations uh, depending on what vehicle you have. And uh, I just wanna go over the, the main parts to it. So. This is the radiator up in the front. This is what we where we remove the heat as air goes through the radiator. The heat from the motor coming in through the upper radiator hose is removed. It does not show you the fan. The fan could be electrical or it could be belt driven. Uh, this also shows you a radiator cap. And if you look at the hose coming off of it, the little small hose, that is going to a reservoir. So when you check your uh, cooling system fluid, you always check both the reservoir and the radiator cap, depending if it's on this type of uh, system. So the fluid that's hot comes into the top of the radiator and the fluid, and then it traverses across and comes out through the bottom. Uh, that is the bottom side is a suction side to the pump. So the water pump is right here. There's uh, different places where they can put the pump. Uh, it's also sucking fluid from your heater core. So this is the cooler uh, fluid as it enters the water pump. And then the pump then transfers that water around each of these water jackets surrounding the pistons. So this is a four cylinder motor. So there's four water jackets. And then it goes up into our cylinder head where most of the heat of the motor is generated. Because this is where you're gonna find the valves and the spark plugs and sometimes the injectors. But the the most of the heat is right here. You can see kind of a square design and it really goes into showing you example of when you overheat your motor, you blow this gasket and the gasket cracks or just gets blown out. And then you end up having white smoke come out your uh, uh, tailpipe. So one of the reasons for changing your fluid is to prevent the corrosion that would compromise this gasket and cause it to fail. So let's go ahead now and uh, do the high mileage and you'll see uh, as the mileage increase the particulates inside and in its upper right corner picture uh, uh, get uh, more you get more particulates in little particles and the hoses deteriorate they become on the left the left picture here is showing you they become real crunchy and harden on the right picture is showing you that they become more soft and they swell especially if they get like uh, um, oil leaks on them. The oil is really bad for radiator hoses and heater hoses. Looking at the radiator, the radiator becomes restricted. So if the radiator is restricted, you don't get as much heat transfer and then your car tends to run hotter. Uh, you got to uh, do the service regularly to prevent this corrosion and uh, accumulation of sediments. Uh, eventually, if it's bad enough, you'll get a leak as the picture right here, you'll see a little drop coming and that's because it just rusted through. Uh, even worse would be your uh, impeller to your water pump. The impeller, the blades get eaten up and uh, your car will overheat because if I uh, look at a new pump, the impellers are in great condition. This, what, this is showing you eaten away and I had uh, several ve vehicles come into the shop with a worn out water pump and the impellers were completely gone. All right, so let's go ahead and flush this coolant. So we're not gonna use this machine. We're gonna show you how to flush the coolant without the machine. 
uh, it's hooking it up to the upper radiator hose and the radiator. But what the purpose of this is, is, it, is to get the sediments out and also to neutralize the acidic condition uh, that could arise with old fluid. So anytime you run fluid through metal, it, it picks up uh, elements and it becomes acidic. And that's what eats away your, uh, your uh, head gasket. Uh, also, it becomes, uh, people tend to add water and adding water is never advised because that causes rust and corrosion and then eventually leaks and failure of engine components. So this is the exact reasons why we would change our uh, coolant on a regular basis. In addition, it does protect in the upper upper left corner, it does protect your heater core, which is inside your car, much like your radiator. So I just discussed that uh, the chaining your coolant does protect your heater core. So this is your heating and air conditioning unit. Uh, you have your, uh, right here is your fan or blower motor that blows air over evaporator. The evaporator removes moisture, but then it goes into your heater core and your heater core heats up the air to provide the heat, okay? So what happens if you don't change your coolant is over time, this heater core deteriorates and rusts just like your radiator. And when that happens, they, they leak. And when they leak, you end up having steam and a sweet uh, coolant smell inside your radiator, or sorry, inside your cab. So this is showing you a steamed up windshield and steam coming out of your vents. And then the, the fluid, it drips onto the floor and it creates a musky a sweet smell. Uh, these, these repairs are very expensive. Uh, most cars, you have to remove your whole dashboard to get at these heater cores. And it's much cheaper in, in many cases to replace the radiator than to replace your heater core. So the problem is people uh, tend to neglect the cooling system and changing the fluid. And then your radiator goes bad, your heater core gets, goes bad, your water pump goes bad, and then eventually your uh, uh, head gasket goes bad. And all of these are very expensive repairs, and you could have prevented them by changing your coolant uh, regularly. The last part I need to discuss in your cooling system, and this is just as important in changing it on a regular basis, is your thermostat. A lot of people, when they do a cooling system flush, they not only they flush the coolant, but they change the thermostat. And the thermostat will most of the time be found in the upper radiator hose and it's being highlighted red right now and kind of flashing. And it's a, uh, it's a valve that controls the flow of your coolant through your motor. So this valve uh, is what regulates also your temperature of your motor, okay? So this valve is compromised if you don't change your coolant regularly. So let's go ahead and look at what happens. Uh, they could stick uh, open. So the, the tang breaks here, or they could just stick. And then your flu, your temperature, your motor never gets to operating temperature like it should. Uh, they could also uh, uh, stick closed. So let's go ahead and stuck closed. This is the worst case scenario, because if you see your temperature gauge at the top, it's uh, going to the hot and eventually your car will overheat because it doesn't allow the coolant flow. So uh, when your car overheats, that's when you compromise your head gasket. And when the head gasket goes bad, well, then you have a problem with uh, uh, your car not working properly and you're on the road uh, with, could be steam come out of your hood or your car just dies because the vehicle hydrolocked. Uh, you every once in a while you might see a person on the side of the road uh, with steam come out of your hood. The cooling system is very important to maintain thermostat, fluid. Um, so I can't emphasize it enough. Rolling. So I'm gonna, we have two th two areas that fill that you need to fill the radiator, which is right here, and then also the reservoir. So we're gonna drain the res. Whoop, and there's an example of why we need to have a fender cover on. So I just got uh, antifreeze on my car. 
Uh, we always try to emphasize in our shop to use fender covers to keep uh, your fenders and everything clean because that's just the professional way to do it. So I'm going to insert this. I want to get all my old antifreeze out of my reservoir. So I'm just going to put this in here. Uh, it has a little foot rest right here for you to hold it. And then on this side is the valve. So to pump fluid out, you go up and that will pump the fluid that's in here out. But we want to suck it in. And then we're just going to draw that antifreeze right inside. And there it goes. Just suck all the antifreeze out of that reservoir. Now it's draining. And you want to get all that antifreeze out of our reservoir. Yeah. Did it stop sucking? We just flip the switch up, and then that will stop the sucking under that. And so that's all clean. Okay, so we'll fill that up. Now we're ready to go ahead and uh, lift this vehicle up, and then we're going to find the petcock. Uh, the petcock's a little screw at the bottom of the radiator. Uh, before I lift it up, you want to take the radiator cap off to allow air to push the fluid through the radiator. When you take the radiator cap off, check the spring, and always check the, the, the seals to make sure those are in good condition. And my cap's pretty new, so I want to stick that right here so I don't lose it. We are going to use a, uh, a uh, food catch or a drain bucket, so I want to have this clean. So let's go ahead and clean this. And we do recycle uh, coolant in our shop, so uh, we will show you where to put the fluid. Uh, if it's a real person's car, we recycle the fluid. If it's a shop car, we just reuse our old fluid because the cars never leave the shop. So, I'm going to let that uh, completely drain while we lift the vehicle up. So we're going to raise it all the way up. I already have the arms in place. Uh, I already shook the car so I know it's safe. We got our clean uh, drain bucket. I do like using a special catch because it kind of helps uh, catch more of the fluid. Okay. And then I'm going to put this right underneath our, uh, where we're going to drain it. Okay. So right here, going to lock it in place. So our pet cock is this little screw right here. Okay. Now I haven't done a coolant uh, drain in a while. So I'm actually going to have to use a pair of pliers, but I'll loosen that and it'll drain right here. But by having the vehicle really high, it's going to splatter. So we're also going to lower the car down right above this and then allow it to drain. So let me get a pair of pliers real quick. I'm going to loosen that up. There we go. Get it to where it starts to drip. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and lower the car down so it doesn't splatter all over the place. And then I can go ahead and pull this out the rest of the way. And then we're just going to let that drain. So now it's just a waiting game. Rolling. All right, so we're pretty much done, but I want to show you another way we could drain the coolant on this. So I'm going to close off my pet cock, and you don't need to use pliers to tighten these. So that was tight uh, because of just time, but just hand tight for the pet cock, and then I'm going to raise this up. Okay, and then some cars are not equipped with a pet cock or a drain. So the, your only option is to take off the lower radiator hose. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to get a pair of pliers, or not pliers, so a socket, ratchet, probably a 5 hose clamp. And so it's no problem if you uh, don't have a drain on your radiator, because then you just loosen your hose clamp. But this is the messy way, I will tell you that. And then you gotta use a 
a radiator hose pliers because this hose has never been off. And I'm gonna snake that in there and then I'm gonna break that seal because like I say, it's never been off. There it goes. Okay, and shame on me, I should have my glasses. And then I don't wanna be anywhere where it's gonna splash, okay? Because it's the messy way of doing things. Just remember that, okay? Get that ready to catch. So we're gonna put that hose back on now after it finished training, and then we're gonna tighten up our hose clamp. It's that simple. Um, so if, no problem if you don't have a drain uh, or a pet cock for the radiator, because every radiator has a lower radiator hose. And snug is good. You just wanna feel it where it starts to crease the rubber. And I'm good on this. So all professionals, it's attention to detail. So I'm not gonna leave this coolant just dripping off of any of this. I'm gonna wipe it down. Uh, coolant, when it uh, um, when it starts to heat up, it uh, has a sweet smell. Uh, and so the person will think they have a leak or something like that. So you wanna get that residue off so it doesn't create that smell. And we're ready to lower the vehicle. And I'm gonna show you real quick where we recycle our coolant at Monta Vista. Over on the side of our building over here is our coolant uh, um, recycling facility. So we just got a call today because we have to have this drain on, our, uh, on a regular basis. So this is our uh, antifreeze system right here on the side. So the antifreeze. And we do have this service. They come and uh, empty this uh, uh, antifreeze out. So this would be like if you're doing a real person's car. If it's a shop car, we pour this back into the car because we don't uh, we don't drive them on the road. And then put the plug back in right here. So we keep our antifreeze with all our uh, supplies here at the school. Uh, I like Zurich because Zurich tells you right at the top what vehicles or uh, manufacturers it's for. So Dexacool, GM, Ford, Chrysler, and then you have the GO5, which is Ford, Chrysler, Mercedes, and HD diesels. Here's the Asian, Toyota, Lexus, Scion, and others. And then we have the Asian that's for like the Hondas, okay? So uh, Honda, Nissan, Subaru. So that takes a special type of Asian uh, fluid. So Toyota is this one. So we're gonna go ahead and use this. It is a 50-50 mix, so it's already pre-diluted. So I'm gonna probably need another one because it's not completely full. And then this one's the same thing. This is concentrate. So this one we're gonna uh, mix with uh, water. So to use the air refilling tool, we're gonna to use this uh, drain bucket. And this one's the 50-50. Uh, both these jugs are half full. So this one I just pour in as it is. For the other one, this is half full. So I'm gonna to go top this off of water. So it's, it's right about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up. This is a concentrate. So it's just your preference, what you wanna use. Uh, some people like buying the 50-50, some like using the concentrate, where you have to mix it 50-50 of water. So I'm gonna fill that up to almost the top, which is right there. And let's go back and fill a car. So the first one I'm gonna fill up is our reservoir. I'm gonna wash the side, it has a fill line. And I'll bring it up just to about where it says the full mark. Some usually have a, a full hot, full cold. And that looks like it's pretty good right there. So we're good with our reservoir. Put that back on. And now I can pour the rest of this into my bucket that we're going to use. OK, 
Okay, so let's go ahead and use the refill procedures. So our tool is really easy to use. It just goes right inside the filler neck here, but there's two, this one has instructions. They all have instructions, but what's interesting is this has two different uh, ports to use. So if you're doing a water pump, you could actually hold the fluid from draining using this. And that's called the barrier tool. We'll never use that really in the shop. We're gonna use the refill. So you're gonna use the top one up here. So the way this hooks, hooks up is it just goes straight to our uh, system right here. And I'm gonna hook it up to the refill inlet. So here's the refill, here's the inlet. So I'm gonna hook this up to my refill inlet. I'm gonna stick this inside and then it just tightens onto the filler neck right here, like this. And you're gonna get it till it's snug. Give it a little tug, make sure it's snug because you don't want this to uh, move, okay? And then there's two valves here, make sure they're both closed. So now we're gonna hook up our hose and we're gonna put this kit away. If you don't know what you're doing, follow the instructions on the sheet, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and hook this up to this side right here, okay? And then we hook up the air to this side right here okay and then what we need to do is we need you have vacuum right here okay so we're going to go ahead and hook up the vacuum and we're going to open this valve and then we're going to hold the button and then we have this over to the side if it has a little residue in there you draw a vacuum on the system and you're going to go all the way to the valve, the, the, the needle stops and doesn't move anymore. I'm just going to hold it there for about a minute. Okay, so we're as high as the uh, vacuum we could get. So I'm going to close the vacuum valve off here. All right, so I'm going to hook up my fill hose. I'm going to put that on this side. I'm going to put it right inside my, my bucket right here. And then there's uh, R stands for refill on this hose. I'm going to bring it all the way up until I get all the air out of the line. And then I'm gonna hit my vacuum again and get all that air out that, that I let in. And now we're ready. And I just go ahead and fill this up. And the whole thing is you wanna make sure you don't suck air here. So the system is filling up, okay? And you'll notice that the uh, hose collapsed like this, but the hose are going to slowly expand. You can see it expanding because the vacuum that's inside the motor is now sucking all that fluid back inside. So, okay, so now we got our fluid all filled up. So now I can go ahead and take this off. And you can look right inside, it's full. So our system is full. So uh, that's this system that they have. And I have three different ones. Mr. Lear has the Mac one. Uh, it is designed to get all the air out of the system and create a vacuum and then draw the fluid back into the motor. So there isn't any air bubbles. But I wanna show you how to use a burping funnel anyways. So let's... Ready? Okay, so you have all kinds of different adapters for different cars so i know that this is the right adapter for my toyota so i'm just going to put this in i'm not going to show you how to try to figure out which one works for different cars and you put that on so now i have my adapter that fits my radiator i put my burping funnel on and then i'm only going to fill it right to where the t just barely above where the taper is or the cone is on this with my leftover coolant now remember the air refill uh, uh, tool, you don't really have to burp your radiator. But if you don't have that tool, then you should go buy a burping funnel from a parts store. They're like 10 bucks and burp, uh, get the air out properly. So now after I've filled this up, now I'm gonna run the car and I'm gonna show you what I expect with running the car. Okay, so here's the rule. 
and it's you won't find this in any textbook and i think i'm the only one that kind of teaches it is the two 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 so two thousand rpm for two minutes you let it idle for two minutes and then you turn it off let it sit for two minutes and let it burp and check your funnel level so i'm going to go ahead and start it Check your funnel up and you can see it burping see right there burping it just burped there's another one and then we're gonna repeat this until we have no more bubbles our temperature in our car gets to the middle of the C and the H and on electric fans I want to do it until the fan actually turned on there was a big air bubble until the fan actually turns on. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this again. And I'm not really waiting two minutes because we're videoing this. There's guys online that talk about when you burp in your radiator system, you want to actually turn your heater on, okay? So turn your heater on. It doesn't matter if it's on defrost or floor or vent, but you want your heater on and it doesn't matter if your fan's even on. It's just as long, as long as you have it on low with the fan and that gets the air out of your heater core. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it idle for two minutes. And then like I say, we're gonna do this until the temperature gauge gets to the middle of operating temperature. Or if you have an electric fan, you do it until the fan turns on and you have no more bubbles coming out. So that would be like two minutes of idle, two minutes off. Let's see if it burps anymore with it off. Yeah, there's a couple more burps. And the whole point of doing this is if you have air in your in your cylinder head or in your motor, you have stand a chance of cracking your uh, block or blowing a head gasket. So it's really important we get all the air out of your motor and out of your system. So this is a, a, a crucial step and too many people drain their radiator and they don't ensure that the reservoir or the air gets out. And then they wonder why their uh, antifreeze is low in the reservoir. And look at this right here. You'll see that it actually sucked out the antifreeze out of my radiator. So here's a trick. This is a little plug. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here and I could take this out without spinning, spilling too much fluid. And I could put this in my reservoir and I could put the rest of this in my reservoir. If uh, you, you didn't have an empty reservoir, then you could go ahead and just put this back in your jug of coolant. And there we go. Put that in. Take this off. And then I'm going to put my radiator cap back on. And then I would just rinse this area with water to get the residue off and make sure it doesn't smell. So I have my stomp pressure checker. I want to make sure that hose clamp is in the radiator hose that I disconnect is sealed and, and not, not potential for a leak when I walk away or drive away. So I'm going to put my pressure checker on here. Uh, I, to make it do pressure, you got to make sure that this valve is released. Okay. 
So now I can go ahead and put this on easy. So, let's see. There we go. And then, like I say, this is the release side. This is the pressure side. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize this system. And I'm gonna get it all the way up to the green. Okay, now radiator caps will always tell you what to pressurize it to. Uh, this one, well, I replaced this uh, recently. So nor normally it's about 15 PSI, which is where I pump to. There you can see 17, 19, 15 PSI, or here's 15, the yellow's 15 to 16. So I'm right at the top of the yellow and it's holding. And I would uh, uh, let it hold for two to three minutes. If a needle doesn't drop off, I have no leaks. And it looks like I have no leaks. I don't see anything dripping where my radiator hose is at down there. So I look underneath, make sure there's no drips. So we're good. So I'm gonna release the pressure. So this is just a good way to make sure that your system is sound and I'll release the pressure. Yeah, so there we go. And then I got the pressure release. Usually this uh, valve allows you to release the pressure, but uh, I have to check out and see why it's not working. And then we're good. So for the uh, radiator uh, refill is to just go ahead and rinse off any residue that you think you might have, okay? Uh, the reservoir right here, it looks still a little bit low, so I'm gonna, I could go ahead and add some water into the reservoir. It has coolant in there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and top off the reservoir with a little bit of water. And that's good right there. Okay. And any place that you think you spilled the coolant, just rinse it off because the, you don't want that sweet smell uh, from the residue uh, burning off the system. 